know, one quick. Yeah, I've been going back to the before. Um, it's, a straight, it's a straightforward question. Would you have designed it like this? If you were the British government, would you have designed a contracts for difference model to, to fund a new nuclear build? Is it the cheapest way of, of, of doing it? But the, the problem is not to fund nuclear build, it's to fund low carbon uh, energy. And uh, I think the, the, the wise choice... No, 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 I'm separate. I'm, I, 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 allow me, I take nuclear out of this. If you were funding nuclear, yes. would you have done it this way? Yes. I believe so. Why? Because it brings uh, the certainty on the long term that the investors, the funders, are legitimately asking for. But, but the problem with nuclear the, is the upfront initial capital costs yes. is the challenge. The ongoing running costs in comparison to others yes. are marginal. True. So if you're going to guarantee a price floor, that's perverse. It's the wrong way around, isn't it? No, because it is uh, the return that you have is on the duration of the, the whole... No, return per you is on the duration. I mean, I, yeah. it looks like it's structured to pay an annuity to the French taxpayer for, for the next 40 years. No, 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 sorry. We should avoid any sort of uh, jingoism in this matter. No, I don't think we should, because it is a state-owned company. It's not about being jingoistic; it's about being factual. Okay, okay, okay. We, we are, we are, uh, we have shareholders. One of them is the French state, and others mm. are in the public, and they are all uh, looking for a clear uh, financial <coughs> discipline, which mm. implies that we have a fair return on the investment we are making, and at the same time which requires that there is a fair deal for the consumers. And the EMR is all about bringing certainty in a world which requires certainty, reducing in doing so the cost of capital to allow uh, the deal to be made. But if the so government I goes and borrows the money, sir, if the government borrows the money, they will pay less interest on it than if we incentivize you to go and borrow the money. That is true, yes? No. Yes or no? Yeah, but the plan yes or no, sir? But, yes, okay, but you, you, are, you are assuming the government wants to invest in this No, project. I'm asking you a simple question. Is it cheaper for government to borrow the money and build, or is it cheaper for me, for me to borrow it to incentivize you to borrow it? I think you need to put a price against the cost of, of all of the other costs. It's not a complicated parts. question. No, it's, 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 I'm sorry, but it is a complicated no, question. No, it's not. Can government borrow money cheaper than you? Yes or no? It, the question is the equity cost, not no, the borrowing cost. No, it's a simple cost. question. Can a government borrow money cheaper than oh, EDA? Yes. And so what? Sorry? And so what? Yes or no? Do, 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 do you okay, want, I mean, I, you I don't think this is a complicated If question. the answer is yes, so what? Do you well, suggest the government, case, you suggest if, the government if, if invest the, in the project? If the answer is yes, I would suggest to you that in view of the fact that the initial outlay in nuclear is significant and that the ongoing costs are marginal, if the answer is yes, then contracts for difference by definition is not the cheapest way of doing it. But That's the point. Because you are assuming the government wants to invest in uh, nuclear projects? Directly? No, I'm saying that if the capital cost outlay is the significant part of nuclear energy, which you agree that it is yes. at the start, yes. if you are borrowing that money at a higher interest rate, by definition it's costing more than it should. But you are, you are, you are comparing a one scenario to a scenario where the government no, no. will invest directly in the project? No, 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 no. this is simple. Don't so try to make it complex just no, because no, it, I'm it, trying I mean, to understand what is, what is uh, behind your question. If you are suggesting that the government invests in the, in the project, it's a different story, but it's not the one I'm asking your in. opinion. I mean, I mean, the problem I see with this is there's one person in negotiation with the government. It's a great position to be in, particularly when we have legally binding CO2 emissions targets. Sorry? Legally binding CO2. Yeah. Is that not the case? I mean, EDF is in a very good position here. I mean, congratulations. Because we have legally binding CO2 emission targets, and the only, reason, the only way we're going to hit them is by building nuclear power stations. We are in a very good position. What does it mean? Do you mean that we are in a position to twist the arm? Anyway, you, uh, I'll move on. I'll move on. I'm trying to be factual. One final question. I'm trying to be factual. I don't accept the idea. I'm moving on, sir. I'm moving on, sir. So I'm moving on. I don't accept the idea. When you're in discussions about cost discovery and Being an investor on the long term, we are in business to twist the arms of UK government. It's not the job I am in. When you are in discussions on a cost discovery, an interesting phrase, how on earth do you arrive at a price, a strike price, when you don't know what the cost of copper and concrete is going to be in five, ten years' time, which is the sort of construction period we're talking about? How on earth 
when all of this is about construction cost and we're bundling it into the strike price negotiation, how on earth do you arrive at a strike price when you have absolutely no idea what the cost of copper and concrete is going to be in eight years' time? You That's don't not know. true. It's That's not true, true that, we, that we can't. I mean, those are issues that we need to look at on a risk register and work out who's best to take the risk. But, you, you know, copper has got a futures market, for instance. So you can't, you can't make sweeping uh, comments like that. It's not correct. It's not correct. I'm not making sweeping I'm just saying but you can't predict what the cost that of commodities is going to be That is the whole point of our, our, our open book approach with, uh, with DEC. They have access to all of the information that we have on the cost of construction and the bids that we have and the process that we've been running through. It's going to be completely open and transparent. And at the end of that, we'll come to a decision as to who bears uh, the risk. As Vasa said, we're going to take the construction risk. Um, and that, that's all part of the discussion and negotiation that we're running through. Well, I think at that point, bring this session to a close. If there's anything you think you wanted to say but didn't manage to get across, uh, you obviously write to us afterwards. And if there's anything we've well, not questioned, we'll be back in touch. Uh, for, for having a bit of extra yeah. time, yeah, uh, thank you uh, for all the questions. Uh, just to let you know, we are uh, on the verge of making a big decision. The decision is not yet taken because we need to uh, uh, progress with the discussions and the government has its role to play. And I am confident that for Britain, sooner rather than later, there will be good news. Good news for the security of supply, good news for the affordability of electricity in this country, we do need good news more. for the decarbonization, good news for the jobs, good news for the growth, good news for uh, the role of yeah. Britain in the world. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm really pro-nuclear. I mean, I, if it was up to me, I'd, I'd make the decision to have a fleet tomorrow. Um, my concern, though, is, 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 is that the first reactor we, we purchase, the first of a kind, if it's too expensive because we've borrowed money expensively and we've basically been in negotiations with essentially a monopoly provider, so we all know which way that's going to go, um, that it's going to be so expensive that the, politi the politics will come in and they'll say, well, we can't do that again because look what happened last time round. I mean, I, I presume you heard my exchange. I mean, that's my concern is that the, Mr. EDF, uh, Monsieur EDF, was, is extremely happy, isn't he, at the moment because he's got this, he knows he's going to get the contract. Would you agree with that assessment? I think they are. Yeah, they are happy. I, mean, I, mean, I think they probably should have it. I'm sure they should have it. But, but not at any cost. Though. That's well, my, no, my no, concern. Not, not at any cost, yeah. but I think that's the thing. But I mean, when they come up with a cost, and you know, we don't know what that is, and hopefully they're going to, they're going to add all their little bits together, come up with a total, add a contingency, uh, and say that's the figure. Um, and presumably that will be transparent. They said it would be transparent so that the, the, the government can look at it and say, well, you've got too much in, or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're quite right. But we <coughs> did not know what the costs of nuclear were. Therefore, we thought we would look at it from the other end. What would be the revenue? And all this was an attempt to protect the brand nuclear. The, the, the only route to um, secure low carbon uh, electricity at affordable cost. And what we are seeking to do is to protect that reputation. And we agree there, there may be a problem as a result of the strike price negotiation. And, and, and if you were coming at this afresh, um, would you agree with me that taking nuclear out of this energy bill and treating it differently would be a good idea? And secondly, in doing that, would you also agree with me if you set up a business, maybe we bought out EDF or we bought out Centrica's share of what was British Energy, that if you had a state-owned or a uh, a majority shareholder ownership of a company that then was tasked with building a fleet of reactors with underwriting from the government, that that would actually be a better way forward in terms of managing costs, i.e. leave the market to bear down on the cost of construction, innovation, all those sort of things, but actually the capital um, cost and indeed the construction risk, etc., on the books of the, of, of the state. Would you, would you agree with that as a better model than what we're contemplating? Well, this was how it started, wasn't it? We started with the government wanting nuclear stations. 
We gave it to the CGB to set up. CGB uh, organized four groups of industrialists to get together, put in competitive bids, and that was the way it went. Unfortunately, we haven't got anybody for competitive bids at the moment. PDF, we had any kid on the block. I think what you're really asking is if we were starting, we wouldn't start from here. Mm. But we are where we are, and therefore we have to, if, if we're serious about getting nuclear power reasonably soon, we've got to take a decision. But there are several ways in which you could finance nuclear. Uh, the government, for example, could simply say we will find a way of handling the high upfront costs, and we will recover them when you're generating electricity. Now, I don't see much objection to that, but there may be a political objection today. In, in, with regards to the costs, um, if you were still advising Mr Butler at number 10, would you be advising the current Prime Minister to finance it in the way that it's being financed, nuclear new build? And if not, why not? Well, I, I thought your question earlier as to whether to do it di with direct government funding, which must be cheaper uh, than doing it through a corporate uh, vehicle, either debt or equity, uh, is interesting, but we're, we're not at that point. I would, uh, if I were there, I would be encouraging them to put all these figures out on the table and to show why we're going for the mix that we're going for. So to come to a decision on what balance of energy supply we want, what part nuclear or anything else has in it, and and to justify it openly rather than suddenly presenting us at the end of the year or whenever with a solution. So, so I mean, so that's a no, you wouldn't be doing it like this, but because where we are, you're saying, is that what you're saying? I, I think, well, I don't want to get into politics, but I think it should have been done two years ago, and I think it should have been done much more openly uh, up front so that people can see what they're getting and what they're going to pay for it. And also, forgive me, but we haven't actually signed the dotted line yet, have we? No. So in which case, where we are is where we choose to be. Is that right? Uh, clearly, that it, where so we are should... is a government decision not to have closed the debate off yet. And of course, EDF would say that they have not come to a decision yet. They have to take it to their board and to get investment approval. So my point is, is that if you were being, if the Prime Minister had to sign on the dotted line, you'd be advising him not to if you think it's not necessarily the most cost-effective way of delivering nuclear new build. Yes, that's right. Uh, I agree. I, I wouldn't sign with the degree of uncertainty that there is now. Sorry, Mr. Butler, 